Hey guys, it's Kyle from Backcountry Adventure Motorsports, and this is the high fender kit from Alt Rider for the Honda Africa Twin. I'm going to be installing this today on the bike. It's a really easy process. Stay tuned, I'll walk you right through it. So I'm installing this kit for a couple of reasons. Currently I have the fender riser kit on there and I've got plenty of room and in between the tire and the, and the fender. That's not really an issue. Um, the main reason I'm installing this is because if you see here, there's some markings on the bot or on the top of the fender. What that's from is um, when my suspension uh, compresses, when I'm doing, you know, heavy off road riding, it's actually compressing so much that it's hitting the upper crash bar where it ties in the middle. Um, it hasn't done any damage or anything like that, but I just, I don't want to have to have it cause any damage with that. So uh, I'm putting the high fender kit on for that main reason. And then lastly, it just looks really good. So the kit comes with some pretty nice items. Not only do you get the high fender, you get aluminum fork guards, the bracket, and some heavy duty extended brake lines. So first thing we have to do is remove the front fender. There are these Allen head bolts here. They're five millimeter. We're going to remove those. And then there is an eight millimeter uh, bolt here that removes the, the brake lines. Uh, there's these bolts on both sides. If you have the high fender kit, you'll be removing your bracket as well, but you need to remove that stuff and get the fender off. This plastic shroud here just pulls off. You have your ABS line, comes off right there. And this side is free. Again, we'll remove this eight millimeter and then the other bolts on the other side and that fender will come right out. All right, so here's the right side. I got it all cleaned up, got the brackets removed, and now we're just going to use the original hardware and install the right-hand fork guard. All right, for the right-hand fork leg, you want the original hardware to look like this. You want the hats on the inside of the fork guard. Make sure you're in Loctite these, and go ahead and install these on the right side. You just wanna get these snug. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our bracket and we're going to take the 50 millimeter bolt and we're going to start it in through the bottom side. Then you're going to take your unthreaded spacer and then your, your threaded spacer here and you're going to screw this on. Don't get it real tight because as this tightens, it actually wedges and that's what holds that in the neck. So just uh, get it started and we're going to go ahead and mount this up. So before we can mount that bracket, you have your brake lines here. You have your, this is the neck. Um, you have this eight millimeter bolt. We need to take this off and remove this ABS and this brake line uh, and get it out of the way. So a little bit better view here. After removing the eight millimeter bolt, you have your clip that's on there. You just, this is very bendable metal. Just move this out of the way and unclip it. And you have this little black plastic clip that holds your ABS to your brake line. Go ahead and remove those and get those out of the way. All right, so next thing we're going to do is your lower clamp, your lower fork tube clamp on both sides. You're going to remove this lower bolt and you're going to save that bolt because you're going to reuse it. Once you remove your lower bolt on both sides, you're going to slide the bracket partially into place, remove your upper bolt and slide it all the way into place and put those bolts back in. Right here is where the middle slide lock bolt is going to go in. So as I said, once you remove the bottom bolt, you want to put the bracket partially into place first before removing that top bolt. This is because the fit and finish on this is so tight that if you remove both bolts first, you're not going to be able to get the bracket on. So make sure that you uh, remove the bottom bolts, slip it on over, and then remove the top bolt, and that will allow you to slide it the rest of the way up. All right, so we got our our bottom Allen head screw here, tightened down to four newton meters as it says in the directions. And then we have our, our lower fork tube bolts uh, tightened down the directions, say 25 newton meters. I know 
people are going to argue what to do as far as the, the lower um, torque specs go because there's some controversy with uh, Honda specs saying that these are too tight and that's what's causing some of the wear in, in, the, uh, in the fork tubes. But I'm um, just, just telling you, Alt Rider says uh, 25 Newton meters and that's what we tighten them to for now. Okay, so now we're ready to install our, um, our right side fork leg, uh, the fork leg guard. And what you want to do is you want to make sure and get your uh, zip ties in this way. They're really stiff and they're kind of hard to get in there, but just make sure that's what they look like so you can tie the, uh, the brake hoses in there once you get it assembled. And then on your right side, you have a cable tie. Make sure that that cable tie is ran through that way. Now we're going to go ahead and install the right side fork guard. And just like the left, you want to make sure that you have your um, spacers on the inside of the guard. And big thing is make sure that your ABS line uh, runs down in between these right here to give it some protection and that it doesn't get pinched. All right, we're going to go ahead and just finish tightening these up. Um, make sure, again, you get a Loctite everything. Uh, this bike, or bikes in general, when you have them off-road, they bounce around like crazy, they vibrate, and you don't want to lose uh, any hardware. Again, don't get them very tight because, or don't get them real tight because uh, they'll strip out. And these guards are awesome. They're aluminum and they do a really good job of protecting everything that's vital. Like I said, the, the ABS line, the ABS sensor uh, is, is, is all protected right there. And I really like how they did the fit and finish on these. All right, so next we're gonna be working on the brake lines. And uh, to me, one of the most important things when any projects is just trying to stay kind of organized and keeping things clean. So uh, when you're messing with brake lines, it can get messy. Um, so things are nice to have, some uh, rubber gloves, paper towels. For bleeding the brakes, a length of hose is always awesome because you can direct where the, the brake fluid is going as you bleed them and you'll need some dot four uh, brake fluid and some brake cleaner and then some kind of catch pan or 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 pail to put your your fluid in as you bleed them but uh, again we're just going to remove some of the, the brake lines here and it can get messy so maybe even putting cardboard or something down is, is, is wise so as i mentioned before the kit comes with some really nice uh, heavy duty uh, russell brake lines uh, you'll have your, your banjo end here and then you have your, your block and banjo end with here on this one. Um, it also comes with some brass uh, some washers. Uh, you want to make sure and replace the washers. Don't reuse the ones that are already on there. And uh, try to keep these as clean as possible. I like to just set them on the plastic and keep them that way um, until I'm ready to use them. But we'll go ahead and get started on the brake section. All right, so we're going to remove the banjo bolts on, on both sides, on both calibers and remove the lines, uh, let, them, let them hang and drain uh, for a little bit before we remove them. You're gonna wanna save your banjo bolts uh, for both sides because we're gonna reuse those. Like I said, we're gonna reuse the bolts, but not the brass washers. Before getting started, you're gonna wanna remove your top cap uh, of your brake reservoir and also the rubber fitting that's in there. Remove those, set them off to the side, make sure and keep them clean. Uh, the number one thing with doing brakes is you wanna make sure that your brake fluid in your reservoir doesn't get too low. So you need to want to monitor that at all times. So when you remove your brake lines, just uh, keep the, the brake fluid ready if you need to top it off or add a little bit more because if you get any air in that line, it's, it's a real pain in the butt to, uh, to get that air bubble out. All right, so on the right-hand side of the neck, of the steering neck, uh, you have this, um, this brake block here, your brake line block. Uh, the lower 10 millimeter fitting, you're gonna to wanna to loosen that up and uh, we're gonna remove this eight millimeter in the middle of your screen there, that eight millimeter um, bolt, and we're gonna remove that brake line. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna loosen the, the, lower, the lower nut right here with a 10 millimeter. Um, it's very soft metal, so make sure you have a really good bite with your wrench before you start cranking on it. Uh, you don't wanna strip that out, because um, in order to, <laughs> If you do strip that out, then you have to replace that whole hard line and that's not good. So uh, just again, get a good bite on it. And I don't know if I can get in here with the camera and have you be able to see it. So um, yeah, I don't think you're gonna be able to see any of it. 
All right, so here's what we did. Um, we have, I'm not sure you can see that down in there, but we got the new brake line ran and we've got it up higher than the, than the reservoir. That way it's not draining out the reservoir as it starts to drip through the line. So um, we got the brake line with the block attached down there and the 10 millimeter hard line nut tight again. I will tell you that this is not a convenient place for this to be and it's very hard to get that nut started. You might get lucky, it took me uh, several tries and you can see the fluid in there. It's uh, not as simple as you would think, but once you get it started then it goes on a little easier and then you just uh, go ahead and put that eight millimeter bottom bolt through and then that way you can tighten down the 10 millimeter hard line nut. But, uh, so now we've got that on, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna bleed this this line and then we will um, add the other line to it and finish out the brake lines. So one big thing I wanna mention is when you have your um, your fittings back on, you wanna make sure and put your washers. This, this side does three. You have your bolt, your washer, your banjo fitting, your washer, another banjo fitting, and then your final washer. Make sure and don't leave those out because it will leak. All right, so here's our mat. You get your main brake line and your ABS line that come up over the lower part of the triple tree. It comes up and around and it hooks there. Over here, zip ties there. And then it comes down, zip ties here. And as the right side or the top banjo connection. Then you have your other banjo connection that comes up through here, around to that um, zip tie, across the other side to this zip tie, through that zip tie down to here and there. Uh, now I'm ready to put the fender on. So we'll put the fender on. It just bolts up underneath with the adapter that comes with it. And uh, then we'll bleed the brake lines. All right, so after running my brake lines and getting them all tied up and everything, I have uh, my front fender on. Um, my, my kit actually came with the adapter already taped to it. Uh, it comes with an additional adapter, but that one's not used. So with this kit, um, all, it comes with the, the hardware. Just put those four bolts in the bottom, make sure and lock tight it. Okay, so now all we're doing is that we're gonna bleed the brake lines. So you have your um, bleeder valves on each side. Um, I did this this other side first just because it's the first in line and then once that one doesn't have any more bubbles and I move to this other side and all you do is you uh, you press the front brake several times I have a piece of hose attached going up and around and then down to my bucket um, that allows the fluid to go up once you um, bleed it and doesn't allow any air bubbles to go back through and into it if you were to accidentally release it. So give it a few pumps, do about four or five. Bleed it, tighten it back up, and then just repeat the process. So I really like the way it turned out. Um, it fits real nice, It very functional, looks like it was made that way. Uh, I'm gonna have to take off my Denali lights and move them because um, they don't work with this. My fender hits. So that's kind of a bummer, but I'll figure something out. So anyway, other than that, pretty happy with it. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you've been thinking about getting one of these kits or just been looking at them and wondering what all it entails to install it, I hope this helps you out. I appreciate all the love from you guys. Again, I do these videos for you, not for me. It would be much faster for me to install it without having to do a video, but um, I'm in this to help you guys out. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe down below and also hit that bell icon. That way you get notified whenever new videos are released. Thanks again for watching. This is Kyle from Backcountry Adventure Motorsports. I'm out.